All right. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Revelations, chapter 1. And we will be fast. So, today we're talking about the man that God uses. You want to keep the volume a bit high? Just a little higher than that. Revelations chapter 1. One of the problems with Christianity in this age and why Christianity is repulsive to people is that most people that talk or channels of Christianity are people that do not have encounters. So, when they have interactions with the outside world, there is proof. There is proof that they've heard. There is proof that they've practiced something. But there's no proof that what they are saying, they genuinely believe it. And what we're looking for today are not people that come to church. Are people that have been touched. One of the scriptures that really touched me the most is in the book of Acts of the twenty. When God had told Paul he was going to go to um, Rome to go and testify about him. But on the journey to Rome, the ship capsided. Then Paul told them, he said, he said, I know I will not die because the Lord told me I will get to Rome. But guess what he said? He said, the angel of the Lord whom I am and whose I serve. It's such a deep conviction. He said, said unto me, he said, Paul, he says, I've not only saved your life, but I've saved the life of everybody with you. It matters who you are with. And the call this morning is to people that want something genuine, something deeper than coming to church. The call this morning, the teaching this month is to people that are tired of the accolades and the demonstration that come with organized religion and are seeking for something that is genuine, are seeking for something that is lasting, are seeking for something that is transformational and can bring about total change in their life. Because sometimes we've reduced Christianity to coming to church on a Sunday morning, which is not. We've reduced Christianity to... Been joining, singing in the choir and doing wonderful things. It's wonderful, but it's not. The Bible says that Christianity is in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. It's men that have had encounter with God that can tell somebody about encounters of God. If you have not been touched, you can't touch somebody else. If you have not been touched, you can't touch somebody else. The woman in John chapter 4 says, come and see. The reason why she could say come and see is because she had been taught. The problem today with Christianity is that we have people that are saying come and see that have seen nothing. So when they say come and see, there's no conviction to back up the message. Because they themselves haven't seen nothing. What they thought they saw was what someone told them. What well, Peter said, the things you've seen the things you've handled he said these are the things we have seen that our hands have handled how do you find a gun shot pointed in your face and the only thing that comes out of your mouth in the name of Jesus the reason why let me say something to you in case you don't know this when they point a gun at your face someone says do you think it's too fast to think it's many seconds. It's not one second. It's fractions of a second. Your response. In fact, they call it something in, in, in psychology. They say when you face accidents, you either freeze, you fight, or you, there's a third one. You flee. Is it flight? It's flight, freeze, or fight. It's what's on the inside. He said, as a matter of fact, when you face it, in, they said the, the front part of the brain, which is the thinking part, freezes. That is the back of the part of the brain that responds. And the back part does not think. It only comes out of Ross's residual. What I'm saying is that I want your encounters to be God, to be in your residual part. So that when life events happen, you don't respond out of a logical conclusion. It's out of the remnant. It's out of the residue of your encounters with God that answers. And that's why we sang that song, My Hope is Built. Because anybody can sing it. It's when you're looking for a child for 10 years, we know. That's when you will follow your auntie to a herbalist. And you will not be singing, my hope is built. Have you not seen Christians that go and see herbalists? 
Christian that use black certain soaps and say this soap is from this person and they say because of this as fast as I'm not hurting somebody else so you believe there's another power than the power of our God and they will come to church and men they are speaking foolish tongues because it is the tongues the demonstration of their stupidity because they don't believe what they are saying if you believe there's no other God than your God why are you going somewhere else but the reason why is that theoretically there's that assumption there's an assumption we have but practically we don't have it and that's why this morning and this month's teaching is an invitation into it's an invitation into the practical dimensions of God that will take you deeper it's like when John the Baptist on the island of Patmos heard the voice the voice told Paul he said come up see that he said Paul he said John I know you are at a level but let's go higher there are dimensions he said come up see that there are dimensions in this thing come up see that don't settle for mere human experiences and explanation settle for encounters of the God kind that you might be able to say where shall we go? We have tasted, we have handled. This is a problem with Christianity today. Listen to me. Every Christian owns the word and encounter. What does that mean? Every Christian owns the word. When your friends say there is no God, you should be able to demonstrate it. But where people that have not had encounters cannot demonstrate encounters. You need to read the Bible. The Bible says, as Paul was preaching, one man said, don't listen to him. Oh, Paul says, be blind for a season. The person we were preaching to the non conversation, he got born again on the spot. The, you are the one making our job difficult because they all have to come to church for a miracle. When you start doing the miracle in business meeting, they will see, they will know because they, they say, I know a king. Ah, ah, they, I know John. They know you. Then they know that this thing is for you. I mean, you were here last Sunday. It was last Sunday in this same service, I think. I was talking about my encounter with robbery about 15 years ago. Was it the service? Yes. It was the service. Yes. I didn't know something would happen on Wednesday. I didn't even know God was using all that to prepare me. Just stay up my faith. Glory to God. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says this. Huh. Revelation 1 verse 6. The guys at the back, you need to move at, a, at the speed of light so that we can go together. He says, he has made us kings and priests. Take note of that. So, God begins to describe what he has made us. He says, he has made us what? Kings and priests. So, there is something in the mind of God concerning you and I. That number one, excuse me please. Even though you're a man or a woman, that firstly, you will be a king. And you'll be a priest. Now, if you're meant to be a king and a priest, it's not enough for you to be made a king and a priest. You must have behaviors, mentalities, value system that support who you are, or else you begin to malfunction. You are you will become an abnormally. I mean, a good example. Where's the lady we use in the other service? Will you will you please come? I want to watch this lady just now. Or maybe I can get another lady, you know. Thank you. So look at this lady working right now. Just look at how she's working. I, I saw another guy. My, my brother here. Will you come? Yeah, yeah, come. So you just stand over here. Let's make this fast. Just stand beside her. Lady, walk first. Look at that. Wonderful. Walk, sir. Question, if for some reason she begins, he begins to walk like him, what will he say? Let me show you what that looks like. So he's coming, then he goes. What, what will you think about? There's a problem, right? The reason why is that because he's a man, there is identity as a man comes with certain values certain behaviors, certain mindset because she's a man. And because she's a lady, she needs to be in a certain way. As a matter of fact, if she was walking, bam, bam, bam. People say, stop walking like that. Don't you know you are what? A lady. Because certain values and behavior comes with certain gender. Yes or no? Yes, 
The same thing, when God says you're a priest, certain behaviors and values comes with you being what? A priest. Thank you. Certain, certain thinking, certain behaviors, certain values come with you being a priest. So when you hear, and listen to me, he didn't say the pastors are priests. No. He says everyone that is a Christian, watch this now, everyone that is a Christian is what? A king and what? A priest. So when a Christian businessman says something like, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a prayer type of person. You, the person is confused because he doesn't know who he is. Because by your design, you are designed to be a priest. There's nothing like a non-prayerful priest. That's a wrong DNA. There's nothing like a, non, a wrong prayer. No, the reason why you're not prayerful is this. You've not been taught your identity. And if you've been taught, you've not accepted your identity. So most this lady that walked and did all this nice work in here, I could bet that when she was younger, she was working like a, a normal guy. But as she grew older, they were correcting her and said, that's not how girls work. That's not how girls talk. That's not how. And as they began to reinforce into her who she was, her behavior began to change to align with who we was. The beauty of teaching is this. You are a priest, but you need to be taught your priesthood so that you can function as a priest. Someone say, I'm a priest. Someone say, I'm a priest. I told you last week, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 9. Listen, they're very powerful. The beauty of a priest is this that the Lord is my portion. Oh my God. It's something should go. <laughs> the guys at the back, can you move faster? Can you, you know, um, Pastor Ford, you need to help me tell them to move faster because they seem to be way behind. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 9. What is happening is that they're not paying attention to the message so they cannot, they, so that they're not paying attention to it. See what the Bible says. It says, this was when they were dividing, dividing land to the, to the 12 tribe of Israel. So they gave Benjamin, they gave Naphtali, they gave who? Um, Judah, they gave Ephraim, they gave who? Issachar, they gave all of them lands. Then when it came to Levi, which is the 12 tribe, um, Moses says, where is their land? And God says, you will not give them any land. Huh? He said, why? He said, because for the tribe of Levi, you must remember that when they say, where is your land? You would tell them that the Lord is my inheritance. What does that mean? For every the person, they got a land. For you, you got God. <laughs> Those that got it are shouting, but I'm going to step back a little so everybody can get it. All those that got lands, when there's a war, they lose their land to enemies. They've lost their inheritance. Is that not all? The one that God is inheritance, if he wants land, God will give it to him. If he wants house, God will give it to him. Because everybody got a gift. Levi got the giver. Are you hearing me? Everybody got a gift. Levi got what? The giver. The thing with gift is that gift is exhaustible. But the giver is not exhaustible. So, listen to me. When you lose the job, they say, why are you not crying? Because the job was not my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. When you lose the pregnancy, they wonder why you're not confused. Because the pregnancy is not my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. When you lose the marriage, they wonder why you're not crying. Because the marriage is not my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. Everybody shout Amen. The Lord is my inheritance. But that statement is the personal responsibility of priests. It's not for everybody. He's the priest. So, so when everybody got a land and built a house, they were shouting. The priest isn't like that. The priest looks for what God is. He said, this one is my inheritance. Glory to God. This is big. That's why our thinking is different. That's why our talking is different. Because we understand in a deep way that the Lord is our inheritance. Somebody say hallelujah. The Lord is my inheritance. So what does the priest do? I explained, I said the priest has got executive for legislation and litigation. 
What does that mean? He says, let your will be done on earth as it is. He says, let your will be done in heaven. Let your will be done on earth as is it in heaven. What does that mean? Every time on earth, it's not the will of God that is done. So, when God wants his will to be done on earth, for example, after the incident, I know you heard the, go- the news that the governor banned Okada riders in Lekki. But question, the governor banned Okada riders in Lekki. Is he the one that will stop them? Who will stop them? Policemen or a tax force? It's the governor's work to give the order. It's another, it's another category of men that will stop them. When God says, I want to do something, he's looking for the tax force on X. He's looking for the tax force on X. People that will say, heaven has commanded, let's make it happen now. The problem is this, heaven always gives command, but there are no men, there are no tax force on earth. There are no, and that's where priests are there. Priests are there. So, so God looks at your family and says, in this family, everybody is divorced. Everybody is divorced. Oh, the first one, the second one, I want to change that. But there's no tax force. There's no priest on earth that says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the priest does. The priest engages that will of God. That's what the priest does. Don't you read about Moses? God says, I will deal with Pharaoh. But did Pharaoh see God? No. What did God say? God says, I will make, God told Moses, he said, I will make you a God to Pharaoh. What? Listen, let me ask. Oh my, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Will, will you take some more today? Why did you think Pharaoh could not touch Moses? He could have arrested him. Touch the priest and see fire. He could not touch him. How could? Because Pharaoh did not have a... He would just come with his staff. He and who? Aaron. And Pharaoh had... Moses would come with his staff. And Pharaoh had these battalions of soldiers. But yet, it couldn't even enter their mind. That they would touch him. He was a priest of God. Because the Lord had told him, I will make you a God. You see a family? You see a family? Nobody is a, nobody is a millionaire. If there's a millionaire, nobody is a millionaire in dollars. Everybody following one path. And God wants to change that. But is looking for tax force. But instead of the tax force, we are busy doing makeup, watching Telemundo, do you know what this is? And God is saying that there's a bigger cause. There's a bigger cause. There's a bigger cause. There's a bigger cause. But you can see it. You now wonder why is all this thing happening? You now cry, 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 and go for therapy. <laughs> now you've gone for therapy for five years. Are you okay? Instead of you to position yourself as a priest. There are many of you, you know it. It's your father's prayer that brought you where you were. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's your mother's prayer that brought you away because, because they stood in the gap. Now your parents are older. Who will pray for your own children? Instead of you to pray, they know you for, they know you for, for patronizing luxury stores. That's what they know you for. That's your altar. You always go and come back with packages. It's good to go there, but don't forget your altar. You don't have men that cannot pray. You, know, you have men that cannot pray. They will just wear suits. They, 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 they have six pack in the street. They are packless. Are you ready? Yes, you have you have women, women that have wombs of intercession, wombs of intercession. But instead of them to be people that design destiny and make up God, they know them for makeup. All they do is Medicaid and Valentino. <laughs> Your mate are slaying demons. You are say slay queen. <laughs> Glory to God. Who slay queen here? <laughs> Hope you know in the realm of the spirit, all that they respond to his powers are. <laughs> they don't respond to make up, they don't respond to queen's English. If you like, no, 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 no. The language your position understand is a language of power, sir. <laughs> and I say, 
I don't know what's going on. My, my, my sister is not married. This is not married. We've done everything, Pastor. Like literally everything. We've done everything. <laughs> you are not ready. <laughs> when you are ready, we'll take you to the altar. <laughs> but can, ne, 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 ne. Once your knee can hit the ground, the power will descend, sir. Somebody shout yes. Men, your mates before they. <laughs> You will see you 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 will see people you see a Christian and pastor have talked about it very well. The people, my people are calling me to come and context. They will soon call you home. You will soon rest in peace. The way they are calling you. God did not call you, see what they are calling you. Everybody people called, they got into trouble. Ask Aaron. Ask Saul. All the people that they called on the other side, when they call them, before they say yes, they will go and consult. They even write in the paper, I've consulted mortal and immortal. Did you ask them who is immortal? They write it publicly. They flaunt their idols and their goddess. They say they told us. Who told you? They go behind and they carry sacrifices. But the born again will just come. <laughs> I'm using intellectual sense. Meanwhile, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty true God to the pulling down a stronghold. That's why you when you enter the contract meeting, you wonder how they turned everything. They turned it from the spirit world. It was going your way, but they turned it. When you enter, what happened? They've turned everything from the spirit world. Have you not seen Muslims before? When you see a prayer for Muslim, they don't tell you. You see the sign on his head. Yes, Where's the sign of your prayer life? You will see rich Muslims, like stupendous billionaires. You will see the sign of prayer. But the Christian, let him get comfortable. The first thing he chose away is prayer. He doesn't understand that the first thing Satan attacks in the life that he wants to destroy is your prayer life. Because once you can disconnect communication, when there's, when there's military coup, one of the things they disconnect first is communication. Why? Once you disconnect communication, you destabilize the person. You can't receive signal again. And you'll be walking not knowing that you are disconnected. Spiritual sense is totally deaf. You will see a guy fully demon possessed and you will fall in love with him. Fully demon possessed. Glory to God. Are you here today? A lady came to me and she was asking to leave a marriage. And I said, why? He said, I need to confide in you, pastor. My husband has been occultic. I said, but I thought he was born again. He said, that's what I thought. He said, he has come home last week and said, we must never pray again in this house. I must never go to church. He said, but yesterday was the final bomb. He said, by the time he came home, he had incisions from the back of his ear to the bone, to his last spoon here. He said, I'm afraid what he can do. I said, but how did you marry him? What did you see? You don't listen today, you see tomorrow. Praise God. What do priests do? Priests manage they manage altars. You know, it's amazing because people that don't understand the concept of altar, I know you love Christians preach about altar, they preach about it in an old testament way. Because they say there's an altar somewhere. What is an altar? The altar is where the spirit lives. What is an altar? The altar is where the spirit lives. Question, if the spirit of God lives in you, you are not the altar. So you are a moving altar. So when they touch you, they invoke the wrath of the God. Where's the altar? The altar, the altar is a place of spiritual transaction. That was why when Jacob got to Bethel and he had the dream, he built an altar there because there are spiritual transactions. So a priest is in charge of spiritual transaction on behalf of the family. Look at Abraham. They were coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham was negotiating spiritual transaction. He said, wait Lord. If you find 50 people there, will you destroy them? He said, no. What about 45? Will you destroy them? He said, no. He said, what about 40? He said, no. What about 30? Will you destroy? He stopped at 10 because in Abraham's mind, at least, he, Lot should have won some souls. Uh, Lot, his wife, his two children, they are two boyfriends. He should have won at least some souls. He didn't know that Lot was irresponsible. Some of you, battles are coming. 
dangers are coming to your family, coming to your to your to, to, to your to your company, to your workplace. Spiritually blind, you cannot see. And meanwhile, God wants a priest that can negotiate spiritual transaction and say, We can't allow this to happen. And the person just say, I, I sense in the spirit. Because there's such season. And, and your, your CEO will be like, how do you know these things? You'll be like, well, madam, let's just do it. I will explain to you later. Uh, there, there, there's, a big financial, there's a big financial institution in this country. The CEO doesn't play with one of the staff. I told him, he said, ah, ah, once that guy talks, it's never thought of position. No. He said, we know something's happening. I've learned by my losses how to obey him. He said, he does not know, but I respect him. Those are priests, though. Priests in the office. Priests in the office that can tell you that, sir, this transaction will be a loss. And God is looking for people after that order. So the question is this as we begin to close. Hey, Mashkabana. Pray in tongues, everyone. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Tell your spirit. Pray in tongues, everyone. Pray, 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 pray. Pray get the kito mirakito marati hasabadi hatelash. Bombo telego poros zuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzuzu
Usher, seven house of God. They never have time for such things. I sit there on their own. Ego. You know what people say? That I don't have time for things. Deep down is ego. I just think that I should not be doing this in church. It's not about time or anything. It's a deep down sense of ego. My house cannot be used for itself. Who gave you a house? Instead of you to turn your house to temple. Thank you. Turn into what? A potter. You know, network have base station. It's one thing to be receiving signal. When the base station comes to your house, another thing happens. Thank you. Bring the belt. This is what you do with the appetite of the flesh. This is a flesh show. He wants to be free. Do whatever he wants. He wants to touch whatever he did. You know, he wants to touch everything that he doesn't have. You know, you, what you have, you don't want to touch what somebody has. You want to touch. You want to do a lot. You want to sleep. This, you will not fast. You take the appetite of the flesh. You say, flesh, before you ruin me, I ruin you. Before you ruin me, what? I ruin you. Why? Remember, every addiction started with a temptation. Everybody that suffers an addiction once said, I can control it. They said so until they couldn't control it any longer. Because if you want to tame something, you tame it when it's small. The bigger it goes, the more difficult it is to tame. This thing that doesn't make you pray, you tame it. This thing that makes you sleep on Sunday morning in church, you tame it. Sunday morning, that's when you have special air condition. Special tiredness will come. You not be sleeping. You start watching online, you tame it. Why? Any fleshy appetite you don't tame will ruin you. The Bible says, they that so after the flesh shall see corruption. That's what the Bible says. This thing that once they hear money, you cannot have sense again. You know, you have to tame it. Every lady that walks by, you will look at the back. Ah, 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 ah. Your mouth is always open. You didn't see what Job said, Job 31. The rich Job, Job 31 verse 1. Show them what he said. What did Job say? Job 31 verse 1. What did Job say? Quickly. Oh my God. See, I have what? Why should I what? Wives, write it for your husband and give him. I have made a covenant with my eyes. That means my eyes wants to see her sort and do her... From, from, from inside the mirror, you can't even touch her. No, 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 no. What do I do? I take... This is what... The way you start discipleship is self-denial. What is self-denial? Let me read the definition to you. This is self-denial. Self-denial is the refusal to give into one's interest and need. Take note. Interest and what need. Some things are not interest. They are your emotional need. They are your physiological need, like hunger. It's the refusal to give in to it. So you take your interest and need. Before you destroy me, I destroy you. You take the interest. Before you destroy me, what? I destroy you. You take the interest. This is denial. You take the interest and need. Yeah. You, you tie it up. What, what do you mean? Before you destroy me, I destroy you. You, you take it. You, you, take, you tie it. You take it. You tie, you tie it. When you tie it, Joshua, come. You tie it. This is self denial. Oh, yeah, move the hand. You, you dare not move. Where is the hand going to? You know, say, Lord, this is my emotions. This is my senses. I give it to you. That now becomes what the Bible calls your reasonable what? Service. Some people serve God, but the Bible says it's an unreasonable service. Oh yes, you can serve God and God says it's unreasonable. When you want to serve God on your own terms with your own law, the Bible says it's what? Unreasonable. Pull it. God uses it. Pull it. At, when God pulls you, you pull. The thing that used to make you misbehave has been paralyzed. That's what priesthood is. Why, what makes you behave is laid on the altar. I lay my life down before your altar forevermore. You paralyze it. Like Jesus, you said, the prince of this world comments and find it not in it. It's a call. This message is a call for higher place. Remember what's going on here? It's for you. Come higher. Come higher. Every Friday night, you can't stay in your house. You must be one back to the other. What is wrong with you? 
Do you have the parabolating evil spirit walking in your car? There's no one month in a year you attend all Sundays all through. Mm -mm. Midweek service is forbidden. But yet, Friday night. Once you are not in Quinox, you are in DM. Where? What? Kubana. Once you're not, you are, you have. DLA, you, you know, you move, throw and throw. <laughs> Can we talk? Or we should pretend. Yeah. This is the girlfriend asking the boyfriend, though. The two of them, the world has finished them. And they're bubbling again. Should we do a threesome? He said, I'll bring the first thing for you. Because the girl can tell that the appetite of the flesh is not subdued. That before you go outside, let me provide you the same. Let's be sitting in together. Don't you have people, once they say you have tight like this, that you should pay tight, all of a sudden, in majesty, bag, shoe, lace, all sorts of things happen, vacation. The only thing you cannot give is tight, but you can buy tickets. The appetite of the flesh needs to be subdued. And this was when you were small, the way you promised God everything, eh? The, you promised, you, there's nothing you didn't promise God. You, not, you promised God everything, eh? See what the Bible says. John chapter 3. Let's close, please. Ooh. Let's close. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. John chapter 3. So they came to Jesus Christ and said, Jesus is expanding. John, what do we do? And he said to them, um, all men come to him. Verse 27. They said, they were, that was the complaint. Verse 27. See what, let me read it. Hold on. And he came to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, he that was with you beyond Jordan, to whom thou bears witness, the same baptized it, and all men come to him. They're like, he's doing so well. John, you should be feeling bad because you're shrinking. Then what did John say, verse 27? John said, and John answered and said, A man can what? Receive nothing. Except is be given for what? You know the problem with these business people? All of you, I'll tell you this in mind. You are a king and a priest. The problem is that you enter, you want to make happen in physical. What you have not received from heaven? Error. He says, this, he says, the guy you see is just exploding. is exploding because he has received from heaven. So the problem with you is this. You say, ah, hey, wait, they, they engaged that. Am I not older than that? It's not about age you receive from heaven. Have you received from heaven? What you need to do is to go. You're a priest. You go into your priesthood position. You stay on your knees until you receive from heaven. My ito kamane kapata. When you receive from heaven, watch this as a priest. You will not come out as a king and be negotiating and be talking and be planning and strategizing. Most people are talking, planning, and strategizing. They have not received from heaven. They are not wondering where the problem is. Listen to me. <laughs> Prayer builds spiritual infrastructure. If there's no infrastructure, your goods cannot move. You receive. The thing is that Jesus had already paid the price as a priest. By the time he came, everybody gathered. There are some prayers you have to pray. And nobody has to wake you up. You have to tell yourself. Thank God that June the first to the third, we are fasting and praying. You can allow the appetite lead you to as you desire, but you can choose to subdue it. Verse thirty, please. What did John finally say? John said, "He must increase. I must decrease." That's what I was telling you in the beginning of the service. You can increase and increase. One must go down for the other. The more it's more of what you will, what you want, know that God is going down in your life. That how do you know you are growing spiritually? The more it's what you want, know that God is going down. The more it's what He wants, know that you are going down. And you know the thing about all these things. When you start, when you move up the way of God, you don't see the result instantly. It takes time. It's like a tree that there's no resource under. The tree is dead, but before it shows in the fruits, it will take time. But by the time it eventually shows in the fruits, it's going to take time for him to get life again. Let us pray.
Hallelujah.